Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes to us from uh, Rick D'Andrea. D'Andrea. It's got a hyphen in it. And he's Victor Echo 5 MIR, so Canadian. And uh, thank you for writing. And he says this. Uh, He's been licensed for a number of years, but has not been very active. Um, and, okay, he just used a long wire, which is great for reception, not always so great for transmitting. Um, now he's retired, and he wants to do more. Okay, he um, says, I have two questions regarding an attic installation at my home. The first one is, does the predetermined length of a long wire antenna begin at the back of a receiver, including the coax, or at the edge of the coax that leads to the back of the receiver? Um, first of all, a long wire antenna is by definition uh, equal to or more than two wavelengths of wire. So for the lower bands, that becomes a very long piece of wire. Okay, so you're probably using a shorter than long wire antenna. Uh, if you do that, you need a, a tuner, uh, probably a uh, high, high range tuner, like an external tuner. LDG makes them, um, MFJ makes them, I'm sure other people do too. I know that Yesu Kenwood and um, ICOM also make them. And in fact, it's their primary uh, antenna method. Now, what you want to do is remote that antenna tuner and put it at the beginning of the long wire, and then you want to ground the antenna tuner. So you can actually put the antenna tuner. These are made to be outdoors. Put it down near the ground, run the wire up and out, and uh, you should be able to tune that just fine. And some of these automatic tuners will remember the right tuning settings for um, whatever frequency you're operating on. Now that's for a long wire. Now if what, and now, um, a long wire or just a piece of wire, random wire, is measured from the output of the tuner and out. That's how long it is, okay? Right as it comes out of the tuner. Now, if you put it as an inverted L like this, and you tune it down here, that part right there radiates too. Okay, that's part of the antenna. From the, where it exits from the tuner, that is how long the long wire is. Now, some people will attach coax to the output of the tuner, take it up to some point outside that's convenient, and then run the long wire from there. Now, you get kind of mixed reviews on this sort of thing. Uh, what you want to do is bring that coax to a lightning arrestor that will ground the uh, coax, the shield in the coax, ground the shield, okay? And that can help move the RF away from your shack if you don't have an outside tuner uh, for one of these, okay? Um, now, another way of looking at this, uh, I think he's kind of asking the question, where does the length of the antenna start? Right at the back of the radio or at the antenna? Now, at the back of the radio right here, you've got, uh, in this case, an SO239 connector. You attach it to coax. The coax, in this case, goes through the amplifier and out and so on. And... Um, the antenna length has basically nothing to do with the coax or the coax length. The purpose of the coax is a transmission line. An antenna is an antenna, and it radiates. Transmission line should not radiate. Okay, so you're going to uh, measure the length of the antenna from the point that you attach to. Uh, your antenna. If it's a dipole, you'll be attaching at the middle. If it's a vertical, you'll be attaching at the bottom and so on. Ideally, the coax should not radiate. Now, if you look at a coax, there's three parts. One, the interconductor. 
to the inside of the outer conductor and between the inner conductor and the inside of the outer conductor is where your RF going out is. The other conductor is the outside of the outer conductor and that can bring RF back in if it's reflected off the way you put the antenna together. If you feed in a dipole without putting a bell in there, there's a good chance you'll get some RF coming back in here. You can put a ballon. Now, I'm talking about a functional ballon. It could be a one-to-one -one voltage ballon. It could be a current ballon if you want. It doesn't really matter. It's a middle. And um, a choked ballon. Now, a choked ballon does not, have, does not have a transformer, but functionally, it's a ballon because it converts balanced to unbalanced by getting that... Uh, RF off the outside of the shield. In any event, you're going to run that to your lightning arrestor. I've got a little Alpha Delta lightning arrestor right here that will be attached to your ground rod. Okay, and that's the end of the line for any current that's on the outside of the outside conductor. What goes through here is the RF that's inside the coax, okay? So I think that answers your question on uh, the receiver. It's measured from you know, the pre predetermined length. There's no predetermined length of a long wire antenna. It's just long. If what you mean is a random piece of wire, then it gets a little crazy because there's such an impedance change where it exits the coax, it goes from 50 ohms to about uh, the characteristic impedance of air, which is 377 ohms. So you can get quite an impedance bump. Now, his next question has to do with um, he wants to build a fan dipole for a single band. Okay, if you put in 80 meters, this would be 3.5 megahertz, you could always try 4 megahertz. I've never actually seen anybody try this, but there's a significant difference in several feet between the quarter or the half waves for these right here. Okay, now any antenna above that, 30. I'm sorry, 60, 40, uh, 30. Um, 20, 17, 15, 12, 10, somehow I got that all messed up. Okay, so there's lots here. If you want to build a fan dipole, and building it for 80 meters is hard because it's very hard to get in the air, so I would suggest you do it with uh, 40. So you've got this, and it's 66 feet long. Okay, that's enough to deal with. Now, your, your next band up from that is 30, okay? And that's going to be uh, shorter. And you can put up 20 and so on. Put up your fan dipole. And each of these will cover pretty much the entire band. Now, a fan dipole is a compromise antenna. You will be paying a little bit of a penalty in the bandwidth of the band. However, if you're building like a 20 meter antenna, which is 33 feet long, okay, a dipole, feed it with a ballon or not, here's your coax, okay. This will cover the entire band under 1.6 to one SWR. And that's about the best you can do with a setup like this without getting into fancy reactive stuff. But you've got a tuner down here that does get into fancy reactive stuff and will give a nice conjugate match to what's going on up here. Now, given that this will cover the entire band, there's no point in trying to make a fan dipole that will not. Let's suppose you make one that's just a little bit longer 
for the bottom of the band, okay? The thing is that both of these antennas are close enough to resonance that they will both radiate just fine. And what you've done is taken your coax and you've got a 50 ohm antenna, a 50 ohm antenna. You connect the two and what you present to the coax is 25 ohms. Okay, because the RF, which will ignore the other bands, sees these two antennas as being part of the same band and you're going to get radiated energy on both and that's not a very good right there it's two to one SWR and it will not get any better than that okay and that's at the edge so for bands 40 and up through 10 and 6 a single dipole will cover the entire band so you don't need to do a fan dipole for it and if you do do a fan dipole for it you're going to find that your SWR is rather high okay so well, Rick finishes with the statement of course the intent is to achieve optimum SWR or am I overkilling this yeah you're overkilling it because uh, just a single wire will cover all of 20 meters just fine most people cut it for the center of the band um, if you you can tweak it a little bit uh, because the SWR will be lowest where you tune it and then slightly go up out at the edges but the antenna tuner that is in your radio will probably cover that just fine okay so there you have it um, it's, uh, hope I've simplified your problem for you and you can put up an antenna that works well now if you're putting it in an, it in an attic of course that's a compromised environment, so you might find that your antenna has a lower uh, bandwidth. But, you know, you've got to decide, are you working FT8 or are you working sideband? You'd probably like to do both. But a 20-meter antenna that is uh, out in the backyard is not very visible. And you can end-feed it. Um, the... ARRL offers a really nice kit uh, to make both the Ballon and a 40 through 10 NFED half wave. And the nice thing about NFED is you can hide the 49 to 1 Ballon up under the eaves where nobody can see it. And then all you see is a wire. And this is the color of the wire right here. It's not black. It's dark gray. So this is designed... Uh, for maximum opportunity to be invisible to anybody who's looking at it. So there you have it. Thank you very much, uh, Rick, for your question, and I hope that helps. Uh, if you would like to help support this channel, all of you uh, viewers out there, please go to decastlercom support. Find a way that works for you. Also, you can go to Patreon at patreon.com slash ke0og and also please uh, subscribe like and if you would like to contact me please send an email to askdave at arrl.org okay until we next meet 73